Welcome to this week's episode of The Soul School. I'm Laura Coe, your host, and I am here with my co-host, Kevin Kaiser. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Laura. I even smell new. I have like that new car smell, like the new co-host smell, which is pretty great. So I'm thrilled to be here. And um, I think what we should do is we should start by talking about, first of all, how the heck we got here, because you just wrapped up a six-year run uh, with your Art of Authenticity podcast, 230 some odd episodes, talked with people from all around the world. So let's talk a little bit about how we even got here and what this is. Sound good? Yeah, sounds beautiful. Uh, well, first, I mean, deep gratitude that you're joining me in this. I'm so excited. It feels so good to announce a new show. It's something I've been thinking about for like a year and change. Um, so it just feels exciting to be be here with you in this first episode. Um, but the art of authenticity, you know, it began out of this interest um, a decade ago. What does it mean to live an authentic life? And I was like borderline obsessed <laughs> for myself. I had a successful life, but I wouldn't have called it an authentic life. I was living a life that I loved to some degree, grateful for mostly, but something was missing. And I spent a decade learning for myself, helping others, the podcast, coaching, uh, books, all of it, just asking this question, what does it mean to have a successful life? How do you add passion to it? What does that look like for different people, different walks of life? But Kevin, there was this like, um, I mean, you know, because we've talked about it, but there was this burning, burning need inside of myself to go deeper. And I couldn't figure out why I needed to go deeper and also how. Um, and then I stumbled into this, this modality that I've spoken about, you know, this Akashic Records. And it was the holy grail for everything I was looking for. Like, how, how do we better describe, get more vocabulary or live from this deeper, deeper space of, of sense of self purpose? Um, everybody wants to know, why am I here? What am I doing? Mm, yeah. What does life mean? And how do I feel happier? Right. And I did too. I mean, it's great to have stuff. It's great to succeed. It's great to have success trajectories, but most people find there's an emptiness to it without this other quality. And so this has been the, the learning for me over the last few years. And the new podcast was a desire to really just embrace this next chapter of my life, right? Which has been going on for like five or six years. But I don't know, I had some like FOMO of making a change. I really was struggling. There was something deeply inauthentic about the old podcast, but it was something that I was used to maybe, yeah. um, but my heart wasn't in it. So so yeah, that's that was that was it. And then meeting you and and hearing your perspectives uh, philosophically, spiritually, um, I felt so alive in our discussions. So I wanted to share the platform and do it in a, in a really new way. Yeah, and uh, be partners in crime to actually explore and do some really cool things together. Because uh, that's the one thing I recognized when we when we first met. We met through our common friend Cal. Um, I felt like I'd known you my entire life. I mean, we just, you know, I mean, there are just some people where you're on the same wavelength and you get like, you speak the same language, you're really into the same kinds of things. And I think it came at a time when you and I met at a time when we were both, like you said, really asking these big questions that we've been asking like forever. Who am I? Why am I here? You said you got, you were sort of disenchanted though right? Like it stopped being authentic, like the, the art of authenticity, like your exploration there, like what didn't feel authentic to you though? Yeah. Right. I mean, how, how complicated is that to navigate when your like entire career is built on this conceptual framework of authenticity and, and you're questioning your own, right? There's something mm, yeah. disturbing. And I was talking to a coach about it and I was like, oh my God, I'm supposed to be like this authenticity, authenticity person. I'm, I'm struggling. Um, you know, I've, I've, I can only say it this way. I've, um, since I was young, I, I've had this profound, deep draw to this philosophical, rich dialogue, um, that spiritual leaders are having 
where they're questioning things at this profoundly deep place. And mm, yeah. I always wanted to be there. And I was discussing this stuff, but I was discussing it from, I don't want to say superficial because I'm proud of the work I did, but there was a, a shyness or something about going to that next level because I struggled with ideas of woo woo and it's weird and spirituality means that you're uneducated or, or something, you know, all that stuff. Like I, I really, I really struggled with my own identity again around what it would mean about me to embrace words like spirituality or the soul or the universe or vibration mm -hmm. or these things actually gave me cringe feelings. And I, and I, um, had to confront myself like one by one to get to the other side of them so that I could, I could have the conversation that on a deep soul level, I wanted to have. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, and I felt the same way. I mean, and I grew up in a very, a very religious home. And so the, like the whole idea around like the woo woo stuff, uh, it just, I don't know, it just, it kind of threw up in my mouth a little bit, right. Whatever people would talk about it. It's like, man, it just didn't feel yeah. uh real but there was still a part of me too that was like no like this is like the stuff that we call spirituality like now you and i i think see, see it the same way where it's like what is the essential reality like what is the essential nature of of life and some people describe it with spiritual language some people describe it with scientific language and i think you and i we love the intersection of, of both of those things you know like what was once thought of as magic a hundred years ago is just science now, you know? So we're right. like navigating right. this language. That's right. And so if before I was like really fixated on this intersection of like success to, to, to purpose, right. Or passion. Now it's like, what does it mean to be spiritual? What does it mean to be embodied in physical mm -hmm. form and be formless? What does it mean, this duality of life, right? Of the, because when we talk about authenticity, we're saying somewhere deep within me, and we point to our chest where there's nothing but a rib. <laughs> and we right. say, right, in here, there's something um, else. And like, right? And, and of course, there isn't anything. It's just, there's physical form right where I'm pointing, but we have a sense of something else, right? And we all have this right. sense of self. And I'm, so fascinated on identity and who we are and what it means to be alive, both in the form and the formless. And how does it, how do you live life in this fluidity between these two places of reality where the seen and the unseen, you know, come together and those two things live in this awakened purpose, a live state of self. And, you know, how does, how does, that work in life. Right. And that's what how I want. How does that to work? <laughs> I know it's like, how does that work? I mean, we, you know, we talk so, like, so often throughout the week. And I mean, even before we got on here, just talking about how, like how crazy reality is, like, how does this stuff actually work? And everybody's searching for the same thing. I mean, really, like you said, happiness, who am I? Why am I here? And it seems like Every single thing that we're doing is in pursuit of that, those answers. That's right. Um, you know, it's like, who, who am I really? And what is my purpose? And yeah. And, and so when we were, we were talking about how can we play in the sandbox and explore the, the stuff that we really like, because we now know that there are other people who, who are the same kind of weird as us. Mm -hmm. Um, so we came up with this idea and I loved the tagline uh, that you, you came up with, which is soul school is the spiritual education you never received. Mm. And like the moment, like the moment you said that, like something resonated deeply in me because yeah, man, I wish I'd had access to these conversations like years ago, mm. you know, um, mm -hmm. that were in my language. And so like, here we are creating the very thing that we want. Yeah. That's why yeah. It's um, I, that, that sentence really struck me too, because what does it mean to have a spiritual conversation? That's neither structured in religious like struct religious structures, right? The religion or 
um, science-based factual things, right? Um, what is it to just talk about these things um, from the philosophical, spiritual texts that have been around for thousands of years to present day? And how do you consider the world through this lens? And as I was coming through my process of shame, like, I don't know, God, what is, my friends are going to think I'm weird. And, oh my God, I have this thing called an Akashic record and, and everybody's going to just, you know, think I've, I've really lost my mind now. And um, I learned the opposite, that there's so many people that are privately feeling that they believe in something, but they would like to explore what that means on their own terms, in their own way kind of like a make a little salad, right? Like a little bit of this, a little bit of that, mm -hmm. a little bit of this in my, in my own organization. And it can change. It can change over time. I might get into something for a little while that supports mm -hmm. me. And then I can shift my philosophical views a little um, to another modality. So I wanted to have those conversations and, and the spiritual education never received really came out of this, this belief that um, what if there was a safe space where we could explore spiritual ideas um, and learn about these topics from the perspective of the Akashic realm for me particularly, but I love all this other stuff as well. And feel free to discuss them without feeling like I'm, I'm moving into a religious structure or I'm mm -hmm. crazy. <laughs> yeah. And you don't have to apologize, right? Like you don't have to worry about stepping on people's toes because you're just, you're just exploring. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that and and also the um the process is actually very disorganizing, right? As you start to dissolve the identity of self and look into these ideas of oneness and the mm -hmm. universe and and energy and the akashic realm and all this stuff, it starts to mess with your ego and your brain and in in a way that is very um, stressful, actually, right? Your your friendships start to get complicated. Who am I in my relationships? Who am I in my work life? Who am I? And everything mm -hmm. starts to break down to break th free. Um, but as the the sense of self um, dissolves, I, I wanted a space as well for people to um, come together and help each other, right? So the little soul school is that. I hope this podcast helps with that. I hope our conversations and, and our are sharing as well. Um, so that said, enough about about me. Like, you know, I've invited you as a co-host because I think you're brilliant on these topics, and I'm I, I love our conversations, and I want to bring in other um, transformational leaders to talk with us. But what motivates you? What inspires you to think about life through this lens, or or to to you know share with the audience? Yeah. Well, I, so I've been weird ever since I was a kid. Um, I was never really into the same things that my friends were into. I just always had this, I looked through this lens of, um, I don't know, maybe like mysticism and, and I don't mean mysticism from like this, uh, you know, highfalutin, like ooey gooey woo woo kind of thing. It's like, no, the life itself is this mysterious, wonderful, like it's, it is mystery. It's not just mysterious. It is mystery. Like, what is this? What is life? And in, in, when I was a kid, I was asking these questions and I grew up in a very religious home. And, and so I, I had this language around spirituality, but I also knew that like the container itself, like the questions I had didn't fit inside the container. Um, you know, something that the people in my life were were more than willing to tell me, like the, the questions you're asking are very dangerous questions. You shouldn't ask these questions, right? Like stay in line, you know, be a good boy who does the right things and follows the rules. And uh, it works for a while until you, you know, you start growing up, you start facing reality and the realities of life as an adult. Uh, and you discover that um, a lot of things don't make sense. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, my, my career, my career has been one of the greatest bless blessings of my life because, uh, right out of college, I started working with really high achieving people. I mean, the, the kinds of people that we're told we should aspire to become. So I spent 10 years in finance, uh, working in the, the wealth management world. And, uh, and then I went into entertainment management. 
And then I started working with um, one-on-one coaching and guiding people that were running companies and, you know, big organizations, and they were miserable. They had all the things and they wanted to be anyone other than themselves. Mm-hmm. And like, it, so it was like this master class in uh, what is the meaning of life and what are we all trying to do? And, and I just realized we're just all seeking the same thing. Like, we just don't know who we are. Like we're just seeking our purpose and we're trying to find all of these answers and what we do and, you know, how much money we make and the scoreboard and right. And, um, and it just totally, I, I had a breaking moment yeah, where it doesn't, it doesn't work, right? It doesn't work. It doesn't, um, work. doesn't matter how, like, I know literal billionaires who feel like they don't have enough. 100%, um, yeah, hundred percent. Right. Yeah. And then, you know, um, some broke ass people who are so happy and everything yeah. in between. Yep. Yeah. And the whole conversation around happiness and what is happiness and it is, it is so backwards mm-hmm. and it's so backwards because, um, the narrative, the things that we've been indoctrinated into keep us productive, like keep yeah. us controllable, you know, and, uh, those things eventually fall apart. Like yeah. classically we call it a midlife crisis but it's like a midlife opportunity, right? For you to see like, here's really what's going on and what the real questions are. And uh, so, you know, for me, classic hero's journey, right? You leave, you think the journey is about slaying the dragon or winning the treasure, but you discover that, no, it's really about discovering who you are. Yeah. And you don't know who you are um, until you do. And then you discover, well, I can't fully know who I am um, because I'm- who are we? And who are we? When I say me, what does it even mean? Who am I? Yeah. And uh, the, the one really cool thing about the time we live in now is that these used this just used to be like the realm of the mystics, right? Like you had to go to India, find a guru to talk about this stuff, and you'd walk away going, I, I don't even know what he said. Um, but now like all of this is super practical. Yeah. Um, it just feels like we're in a different time. And yeah. um So that's why we're here, you know? I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And well, I want to take a moment to welcome all of our new listeners. And I appreciate each and every one of them for joining us. Uh, I hope to have you guys continue. We're going to have transformational leaders come on. We're going to have discussions around our own journeys, um, the greatest philosophical literature we've read, uh, the Akashic realm. Um, We're just going to hit you with all of it, any of it, uh, just to help you in your process, which helps us in our process as we're all here in soul school, trying to evolve our souls towards the deeper understanding that we are infinite, unconditional love. And um, while that is very difficult to consider while we are in form. We're going to do our best to um, to discuss and, and share that with everybody going forward. So thank you, Kevin, so much. I'm so excited to do this with you. And thank you to everybody who's listening. Oh, I'm thrilled. This is going to be a wild, wild adventure. And I truly mean that. You know, this is that this is like this is the exploration I've been waiting for. Uh, I've been waiting to take with uh with a dear friend. So I'm excited that we get to do it together. I love it. Stay tuned. Stay tuned.